Hey guys, Tarko Cyclone FPV. It's a little later in the evening now. I went and had some dinner and now we're gonna finish this build. And so we are building the, uh, let me see. The, uh, I was gonna do a split screen here, but I'll wait just a minute. So we're building the um, Alpha RC, the uh, uh, F140 or the Fighter 140 series uh, at the request of a customer of mine who asked me what, what build I would put on this frame. And so to go over this real quick, we're on video five nine right now, part five. But part one was put, put the frame together. Uh, part two, we put in the HDRC F140 ESC. Uh, part three, uh, we did the motors, which are the HDLRC 1407 3600 KV fire motors, uh, or flame motors, I mean. And, um, and in doing so, we measured the wires uh, at 65 millimeters for all four. And then we did the heat shrink, which was uh, 35 millimeter uh, for all four, applied that, soldered them together. Uh, and then uh, the next video, which we just finished, which was preparing for the FC, which included adding the... Um, the uh, uh, capacitor, sorry, the capacitor here, and then running also the ESC data wire, the uh, telemetry wire from the ESC, and that which attached to the underside of the flight controller in the um, RX6 or UART6 receiving end, and we then soldered in the UART6TX or transmission side to the, um, we, we soldered a wire to that, which will then go to the smart audio on the uh, video controller, right? So let me go ahead and do a split screen here, and now you can see what we're working with. And uh, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prep the flight controller, right? So what we've got here is we've got our five volt, our ground, and our S bus. So this is gonna be for uh, this XM plus that we're gonna use uh, from uh, FreeSky. Uh, and then up here we have all our, sorry, look at this. We have got a little blue strands here. Uh, up here, we have all our VTX and camera settings or pads up here. And on this side, uh, this would be for other receivers. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We have our buzzer and LED options here, which I'm not gonna attach at this time, although I may change my mind and do that later on. It is not necessarily part of the build right now, okay? So let's get started by tinning the uh, board up. Now, if you've watched the videos prior to this, then you know that we already put the, um, uh, you use the flux pen here, the Cyclone FPV flux pen, and we use our paste uh, to do the um, pre-tinning. Uh, we've already uh, put flux on the board, uh, so I don't think I'm going to do it again. I know it's not in this part of the video, but if you watch the videos in order, then you would have already seen it happen. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the soldering iron. So I want you to see something here, another little lesson I want to teach you along the way, and this is a soldering tip. Uh, I mean, pardon the pun. So I use this. This is basically like a hard flux, right? So it's, 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 it's kind of crystallized. Uh, and we sell this on our website. I believe we have it listed, but it was something that was sent to me by a manufacturer to try, and I love it. It's very inexpensive, but here's what happens. So I want you to, as a matter of fact, hold on a second. I'm sitting here talking to the, um, the top here and I've got the screen in the wrong side. So let me just switch over so you can see what I'm doing. So here's the tip of this, right? And I want you to get a good look at this. I'm hoping that I can get this to focus properly. So bear with me a little bit. God, these sometimes these are finicky. Okay, I know it's a little grainy. I apologize for that. I'm still trying to figure out why, but the, as you can see, the tip here is it's not shiny, right? And, and here's the deal. So I try to keep my soldering iron as, as uh, in tip top shape you know, whenever possible. Here's one of the things that I've started doing with this, and I would recommend that you do it as well. So uh, on the, over here to my right, which you can't see, is I have one of those um, Brillo sponge uh, cleaners, right? So you put your soldering iron in there and it scrapes off. And what it ends up doing is basically taking off the remaining solder on here, and it puts it, it, it kind of fits it into all the little mesh Brillo pad looking uh, copper sponge here. So that when you go and you clean your soldering iron, it actually, will quickly melt, remelt some of that and, and retin the tip of your um, uh, soldering iron, right? Okay, so check this out. So this is what I do before and after, right? So this, I will put this in here and it's gonna melt nicely right in there and I'm gonna pull that out. Now you can see it's smoking, right? Then I'm gonna go put this in the uh, thing. Now look at the tip of this. Look how silk, you see how tinned it is? That's what you wanna do, right? So when you want to start soldering and when you're done soldering, you can do it as well. The smoke will stop here in just a second. And now I've got a super hot tip here that is ready to go, okay? Just a little trick and you can find this stuff on the website under tools and then uh, tools and gear, I think, and then soldering supplies, okay? So make sure you use this, all right? Make sure that you keep the tip ready to go and solder at all times. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to get back to business here and boom, here we go. So again, pardon the screws, all these came out during the work. But what we want to do right now is we want to pre-tin the board. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to do the, um, the receiver. So I'm just going to tin very quickly. Now, if you want to see how well this works, uh, it's easy. I'll just run this straight across and boom, all my pads are tinned at this point. Okay. Um, I don't really advise people to do this unless you're really comfortable doing it. Not that it's some kind of talented thing, but mainly because you don't want to accidentally run into something 
uh, a component on here that should not have received any solder. All right, so there we go, right? So we're good to go. All the pads are soldered except for over here. Now, I don't think I'm gonna use a buzzer and LED, but I'm, I'm tempted to maybe do that later. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tin it anyway, and we're ready to go, okay? That being said, let's get started by looking at our VTX as well, because we know we have to add a VTX, and we know I have to add a camera, right? Now, I do not have, I'm trying to see if I have something available for that, and I'm having a hard time finding it. So let me see what options I have here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do for this case is I may just pull a VTX that I've already used only because uh, they're usually brand new, um, but let me, let me just see if I can find something here. Uh, I know I grabbed one, so bear with me a second. Let me see if I can go find it real quickly. <clears throat> Uh, okay, one sec. Let's see. So I've got them here, and I know I pulled the VTX out. Let me see if I've got it. I put it somewhere, and now I've lost my mind and my VTX at the same time. Hang tight one second, and we will find it here shortly, I'm sure. So just let me see what I've got. Uh, well, I'm not finding it. It's a little disappointing. I have a feeling as soon as I give up, it's gonna be right in front of me. So I'm gonna give it one more second to try to find. Uh, this is what happens when you have too much product. Uh, well, so far it looks like I have no luck here. So let me just go ahead and grab another one. So I, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull one out of my build here. Uh, because it will yield the same effect and I've got to work on a couple of these anyway So okay, so what I'm going to do is Just because um, I've got to take these apart anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the camera out so I will use this HDLRC camera and uh, That should be no problem. So let me do that and I'll get this ready right now. So bear with me a second. So this will be our uh, As soon as I get this wire disconnected all right, good. So this will be our camera that we're gonna use for our build. <clears throat> so I'll set that aside right here. And that is the HDLRC camera that comes with the setup, all right? So let me set that over here. And then I'm gonna pull the VTX out of this. Now this, for those of you that remember this, this is the uh, power stack uh, that I built. And inside here uh, is the um, glow in the dark, yeah, not glow in the dark, I'm sorry. This is what we applied for our patent on. And this is called our the CFX which is carbon fiber with an additional center layer. And you'll see this here, hopefully. So if you'll watch that, you'll see how it lights up. I'll try to turn the slide off. Maybe you can see it better. Um, I'm not sure because I haven't programmed it here in a while. Oh, you know, the VTX is gonna interfere. So I'll have to show you in a little bit because that's gonna cut our video short. Uh, all right, so I'll show, you, I'll show you in a second. Sorry, because the VTX is interfering with the video now. And I didn't think about that. So let me go ahead and disconnect that and I'll show you what this is. This is actually pretty cool, and some of our new drones are going to actually have this in it. Uh, we just want to be a little further along in the patent process, and we are now, so we're good to go. Okay, now, all that being said, let's go ahead and remove. Um, holy cow, too much stuff going on here. Let me find, let me find what I need to do. I'll take this. All right. So I'm just going to remove these real quickly. Uh, I needed to break these down anyway, and at this moment, this VTX is pretty much uh, hardly used. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate it here, knowing that it works. Okay, I just need to get some of this stuff off of here, so bear with me one second while I do that. Every once in a while, after a build has been around for a year or two, and I'll keep them to study them, even though I'm the one who made them, I still want to study them and see what improvements we've made along the way. Then I'll break it down if needed. So what I'm going to do right now is just get rid of some of this hot glue and pull this through. Okay, let me do that. So there's my receiver. Let me do this one as well. I may actually borrow the receiver from this too if need be. Uh, because I pretty much built all these the same. So I'll probably use the same receiver, let me see. All right, so let's get these side panels off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off here. 
This was one of my most favorite builds, by the way. I really enjoyed this one. And it, it, it did help um, in the process of getting this patent done. So really excited about this. But again, that's a whole different story that we can discuss later. Not trying to waste your time here. I just want to show you what we're going to be doing. Okay, let me take this plate off. There's our VTX. So we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the fasteners for this. Okay. And since this is the identical VTX to what we were going to plan to use anyway, uh, we're still right on track for what I wanted to show you guys, okay? All right, so let's get this off. There we go, there we go. And then I'll clean it up and we'll be just like uh, pulling a new one out of the box. Let me just get this last piece off. Okay, and there we go. So I'm going to remove the VTX now. Nylon fasteners out of the way. All right, VTX is out, and I will desolder it now, real quickly. Okay, so there's our VTX that we're going to use, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and get down to the receiver because it may, it's just maybe beneficial. I don't have to open a new receiver then since this one was never really used. Uh, I am going to take the camera wire as well, so bear with me here. Let's take this one, two, and three. There we go. That'll be reserved for the camera. These parts we can set aside. Clean that off. And here we have the LED wires that we need to remove as well. Sorry guys, I forgot that this one had that because we wanted to show the LEDs lighting up, which I guess I'll just have to show later then, which is no problem. We'll, we'll handle that another time. Let's get all these out though. Get these cleaned up. There we go. All right. And with that, the only thing left that we have now is going to be our receiver, which is underneath right here. And you should, should, should kind of... I would think kind of wiggle out here, hopefully. Uh, I may have to raise the ESC just a little bit, or else I can actually just desolder this and pull it out backwards, I think. There we go. Come on, there we go. Okay, all right, so that's a small little intermission. I will save this though, because this is a good setup to use. So let me put this in a bag, save this, to use with the ESC here, and then this, hopefully, we can get this out. I know it's a small uh, distraction here, but I did promise myself that if I had the equipment available, I'd stop opening new things. Clearly, I forgot I had this to could have saved myself a flight controller too, but hey, that's the way it goes. All right, finally. So this is going to be, I'm going to set these aside because we are going to use this later and I will demonstrate that CFX option. Uh, let me put that back up here. Okay, so we have our receiver right here and we know this receiver is good. And so what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and uh, prepare this receiver for the for the uh, for the drone, and we're going to look at our um, BTX right here as well. Okay, so for the receiver though, before we go too far, um, this is going to be the uh, let me see, this is the XM Plus, all right, and I know that the XM Plus had a release of a firmware update. So before I go and mount all this and then realize I gotta take it apart for the firmware update, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my receiver or my transmitter and I might as well show you guys how we're gonna do that real quick. So here's the transmitter. And I guess maybe I will end up making this video more about the receiver for this portion. So let's, we'll do that. Let's, it's a, it's a, 
it's a flight controller setup, but it's gonna be regarding the receiver, okay? So here, here's the deal. So when we go to, um, when we go to the FreeSky website, or you go to cyclonefpb.com, you will find an area, and I'm gonna to try to take you there right now, so hold on one second. Okay, so I'm going to share this screen with you real quickly, so bear with me. Um, let's do like this, one, two, one, two. There we go, let's do this, okay. So uh, we're at our website right now, right? And we're gonna to go to the, um, let's go to uh, tutorials and posts and, and what have you, let's go to tutorials. And then what we wanna do is, uh, let's find the FR Sky or Free Sky um, downloads and videos. Uh, Free Sky updates, downloads and firmware tutorials, we can go there. And then we can find the XM Plus, which is right here. And right here, we can go to the downloads page. And I've included these links so that you guys can find it easily, right? So click that. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've downloaded, and I'm gonna tell you very quickly, do not download. Oh, look, they've, uh, let me see if they took down the, the wrong firmware, by the way. Um, no, it still looks like they have this up here. And this is, do not download this by any means. This is causing issues. And I can tell you, I can attest to this. It is definitely causing a problem. So uh, we're talking about uh, the most recent version, which is 170313, which has a release date of March 28, 2017. Okay. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we flash this to our uh, receiver because there are um, fixes, including RSSI, uh, receiving RSSI over the channel that's going to work well. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and power up our receiver. Now, I've already downloaded this software and I have videos on how to Welcome do this, to but I'm going to flash this one and I just need to find the cable. Again, I'm on the hunt for something but I think I'll be able to find this pretty quickly. Uh, but let me see. I need the update cable that I was using earlier, and it looks like this might be it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so we're gonna use our update cable, which you can find on our website, okay? And let me go ahead now and just do it this way so that you can watch the process. So you would download this file here, the 170, but you can also find this on our website. Um, so let me go here, here, and here. Nope, sorry, I know you can't see what I'm doing. There. Boom, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna use the firmware cable right here, right? So this is the firmware update cable. You can find this on our website as well. Just type in uh, FreeSky, FRSky uh, firmware cable and you'll find it, right? So we're gonna click okay. And let me kind of lean this down a little bit. All right, so um, I was working on this to set up a profile and right now I don't have one for this drone, but it doesn't matter. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, because the wires are already soldered on here, I'm not gonna disconnect them. So I'm just gonna solder uh, these wires here to these wires here so we can have a connection. So brown is gonna to go to ground. So let me just go ahead and do that real quickly. So brown to ground, come here. There's a, one should be pretty quick. Okay, and then we're gonna do white to uh, S bus or S port right there. And we're gonna do blue to uh, our positive, okay? And since this is my cable, I made these colors this way because it's what I had laying around. But when we sell them, you, you have a set pattern of course that we were indicating, okay. So with the ground facing outward or brown facing outward, we're gonna plug this into the bottom of our receiver. And this would apply to any receiver you have, although X90 Plus has a, instead of ground power S port, it's power ground S port. That's the only difference, okay? Um, so anyways, we've got it connected here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna long press the menu button, come to my screen here, press page one time, go to my firmware, and then in my folders that are organized here to show here's the XM Plus. I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna to go to the 170313, click that. And I'm gonna use the RSSI on uh, 16 channel um, uh, with RSSI, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and click that, hold it down, and we're gonna tell it to flash the S port. And what you're gonna see is, as long as I don't move this and disconnect it, you're gonna see somewhere, uh, actually, I can't see the light. The light is actually covered, my apologies. Uh, the light is covered um, by the, uh, well, you can see it maybe a little bit there. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. I'm not sure you can see that. There's a little light. Right in between the blue there is a light blinking. All right. Now, the other thing is, and the unfortunate part of this is that I did break. You can see it updating here, by the way. So you're going to get another little lesson here because I broke the binding wire on this, or binding, binding button on this thing, right? So here goes real quickly. I'm going to click OK. The flash is done. I'm going to exit, and I'm going to um, not worry about this now. But I do want to bind this before I continue, because once I put this in there without a binding button, I don't want to have to dig this thing apart. So let's see, I'm going to name this, hmm. I think I'm going to delete 
Uh, I'm going to delete this model here. I'm going to click enter, delete it, and I'm going to copy uh, one that I just made. Uh, let's see, I'll take that one. I'm going to copy that one. I'm going to put it in number 13. Okay. And we're going to name this one. We're going to select it and we're going to name it. Uh, let's see, we're going to name it um, the. Uh, let's go to A. RC uh, and then we're going to do a hyphen I don't know I'm really picky about how I do this so let me see and then we're going to go to hyphen and then the, we're going to go to the F like Frank F that came out wrong should have been a capital but I'll go back and fix it one two three four zero and then let's do that so I'm going to come back now the arc and there we go capital okay so there's our arc f140 that's that right there and um, this is going to be this is number 13 so we want to change this to number 13 and then we're going to get ready to bind it right the only difference is is that uh, and this mode is wrong so this mode is going we're not going to use the external uh, we are actually going to use the internal and we're going to go to the uh, xjtd16 and we're going to change this one to 13 okay all right now um, because I have uh, lost the uh, button here, so I'm sorry, this is going to be kind of a little, little extra lesson for you, but because I lost the button here, I have to actually do some soldering. Or, if I don't want to solder, I can do the following. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, but it works as well. So let me just um, find this. Again, I'm finding something, so bear with me. Let me show you what I'm going to do. And again, if you don't need to see this, just fast forward a little bit. But I think this is a pretty good lesson. Uh, I just have been slammed in. Have, oh, here it is. Okay. So I'm going to use this uh, device right here, right? So this is a Toolkit RC. I love this device. And basically what I get to do is I get to plug in my um, receiver. And then when I apply uh, power, it basically powers up my receiver for me. Okay. And I can see if I'm going to put it in bind mode now. Since you guys can't see the lighting here, I'm going to cut this um, back just a little bit so you can see when the lights are blinking, right? Because there is a distinct blink pattern when you're in binding mode, and I want you guys to be able to see that. So let me just try to pull this back without damaging the unit. Okay, and I think right here is where you're going to see it. All right, so let me cut this so you can see. Okay, so here's what you're going to be looking for. When I power this on, okay, I am looking for this light to not be blinking red, right? I want, to, sorry about all the mess by the way, God. I want this light to basically be solid red and solid green, okay? So we're gonna power it off, and I'm gonna take, instead of soldering wires, I'm just gonna try to do this with my tweezers. I'm gonna take a pair of metal tweezers that I know are bound here, that are connected. I'm gonna try to touch both active ends, which means I'm gonna touch just like this and see, there. You see how, oh, now I just lost it. Hold on one second, I apologize. I should have held on to it just a minute. It's gonna take me just a minute. Nope. There we go, okay? So the trick here is, and I'll show you again, sorry, I, I was slipping with this, but let me just kind of show you a little bit. So you have, and you'll have to just look at the best you can. If you can see right here in the center of the button, there's a centerpiece and then there's an outside perimeter. With some metal tweezers or something where you know it's connected from one end to the other through metal, so you've got a good current, or you've got a solid connection there, put one tip of the tweezer on the center dot and one on the outside frame of the button, right, right there. And now you've got a solid red and a solid green. That means it's ready to bind. Now I'm going to go ahead and bind, and you're going to see this blink. Ready? Watch. Uh, whoops, sorry, that's not it. I'm going to go to bind here. Tell the bind, and I'm going to do 16, channel 16, telemetry on. And now you see the red light blinking. That means we're bound. I can press enter again, get exit to get out, and I can turn this off. And here's what's cool about this. When I turn it back on, watch. I'm going to get a solid green light here shortly, okay? And one other thing I'm going to be able to show you 
is that if you use this, uh, there's my solid green light. Okay, but check this out. With the Toolkit RC, and I'm sorry, I'm having to twist this all over the place. I can now go to my, uh, let me see how I get out of this. No, 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 get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Oh, well, it's not letting me, so let me power off. Power back on. And I'm gonna get to this menu screen here, and I want to go, I'm on the wrong side, holy moly, my bad. Let me go this way. I apologize, I was wondering why it was doing that. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna to go to my option here uh, for measure. I'm gonna to go to S bus, and once this is green, okay, <clears throat> let it bind, it's gonna take just a minute. All right, look, it will, um, it will, let me get this to go, hold on a second. I should probably turn the radio off and turn it back on, but. Been a little issue with the software getting loaded Welcome this way, but that's all right. Let me Switch just get going here with this one. And then let me see if I can power this off and on again. And without these things touching, okay? So what we want to do is, and I'll show you here, it'll come up. So if I go to measure, and I go to S bus, okay. Sorry about the phone, guys. Okay, I think you can see the light there, right? So let's just get that right in line. There we go. And now watch, you'll see the screen here. I need it to not do, okay. So now that we are bound right there, now look at the screen. Watch when I move the sticks. You see how you see that feedback right there? Um, that tells you that we're in good mode here. You can see everything I do. That's why I love this Toolkit RC. It does everything I need to test my S bus without having to plug it into the flight controller and then take it out and redo it. Okay, so this is ready to go. It's ready to be bound. So I'm good. I'm gonna power this off. Take wire, I'm gonna leave the wire in there so I can find it easier next time, but I'm gonna go ahead now and desolder these. Okay, there we go, there we go. That's done, so let's get rid of the Toolkit RC now. Put that aside, start cleaning up a little bit of the mess here so I don't have to open that one again. And put these back, a little wire cutter, sorry. I kinda had a little issue with that, but we're good to go. And we're gonna get ready to put our receiver on. Okay, and now let me turn the radio off. All right, goodbye for that. I gotta find a place for that real quickly. All right, so let's get back to our drone here. So we have the receiver and we know that that's working now and it's functioning right. So now we have an option of where we wanna put it. So my thought is we could put it easily right here because the frame is gonna come over right here. And if we can get this to fit nicely, I don't know where that would be actually, maybe right here even because there's two holes right here to run this through. So this might actually be pretty cool. Um, but here's where our antenna is supposed to go for the VTX. So let me see, what's the best way to mount I could lean it up like this if I wanted, and it would definitely fit within the range. That wouldn't be a problem. I could bring it to the top. Uh, I think that's what I'll do is I may just bring it up here closer to like right here. Um, and then the only thing is then when I do that, I would have to actually solder these wires and then be able to add this back, which is fine. So let's go ahead and just attach the VTX and solder the wires first. So to do that, I'm just gonna twist these together. And I've got, I know where they go, it's right here. So you can see five volt ground and S bus. So that's what we're gonna use. So let me get the tweezers and let's do it. All right, now let's clean off, since I removed these from another device, let's just clean this off real quick. And there we go. So let's do ground to ground. Let's do uh, five volt to five volt right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our S bus next, okay? And let's make sure that that wire is clean. It doesn't look very clean. Looks like the kind of the strands are spread apart there. So let's kind of clean that up a little bit. Perfect. And we're gonna put that on the S bus section right there. Okay. All right, now, ideally you could have come from the inside and done it so the wires wouldn't be exposed on the frame. Uh, but these are going to be a very minimal exposed, very minimally exposed, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but uh, let me see. I mean, it would be. Nah, you know what? I am going to change it. I am going to change it. If you want to, like I said, I mean, I want this to look right. And even though I don't mind, I would still recommend to my.
customers that if they're building this, that they do that. So let's just go ahead and flip this around. Uh, no need to cut corners here, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is instead of coming from the outside, we're actually gonna bring the wires over. So let's start from the um, outside wire, which would be the S bus. And we're gonna attach that. So that's gonna go right here. Just like that. Mm, I think I need to put a little bit more solder there, so give me a second. Okay, then we're gonna do the ground. And I'm gonna also tin that up a little bit too. that now okay and then we'll turn the 5 volt up I got a little bit of solder left right here so I'll just turn it with that and then we'll get ready and we'll go ahead and just solder that right there perfect okay so now look everything's done and the wires are actually going to be hidden and it'll come from the inside like that. Now I will run a hot glue right here to keep these in place just in case. Uh, but for the most part, that is pretty much done. And for all purposes, I could easily just most likely place this receiver right like this. And it would cause no problem at all. And I could get it to stay in place with a little bit of hot glue as well. So I think that's what I am gonna do uh, just to make it easier on everybody and also have access to the bind button. So with that being said, the next thing is gonna be camera and is gonna be VTX, right? So the HGLRC VTX, uh, even though I'm going to use these wires, it's pretty simple. Um, one thing that you want to make sure of is that on here you have your, um, uh, your solder pads and they match the description here. The problem is, is they were not able to run the silk screen all the way to the bottom. So when you're looking at this, the silk screen here actually lines up with this button, but that is not correlating to this pad. That first one correlates to the power here, second one to the ground. Third one, which is OSD, goes to the third and so forth. I know when I first started using these, I kept, when I'd go quick, I would make the mistake and go, oh, bam, 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 and they're not side by side. And I'd always end up uh, obviously wrong and have to go back and correct it. So let me clean this up a little bit, okay, and show you what we're gonna do. All right, so the yellow wire represents what it says here, which is the video, uh, and that's gonna be your video, uh, that's gonna be to your VTX on your board, okay? Which in this case is this, button or this pad right here and then we've got our power and our ground and our power can range from 7 volts to 26 volts so that can go to VBAT right um, this does have the output for your camera I'm not going to use it I prefer to use the flight controller itself so what we're going to do is we're going to wire these and then we're going to bring this um, smart audio cable this wire that we ran to TX6 and we're going to wire it to the uh, pad number three underneath that is for um, uh, OSD out okay or smart audio out right so Let's make sure everything looks clean here, and it does. So the first thing is going to be to see how we want this to sit. We know that the back of the quad is this way, and we know that the frame has an option for this piece to go right through. Okay, the question is, is the, is the thing too close? And it's not, actually, this would fit perfect. So we're gonna leave it facing this direction, okay? Which means that if it sits like this, all the connections are pretty much gonna go right here, and that's how we're gonna run it, okay? The only difference is we need to get the um, smart audio. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, I think what I'll do is I'll stop this video now, okay, and let me do this. So I'm gonna stop the video now knowing that we just finished the receiver, okay, and we're getting ready to do the VTX. So let's stop it here, that way you can go back and look at your receiver. And so far, remember, this is what we're talking about, this is what we're working on. I'm sorry the video looks so grainy, whoops. The video looks so grainy, but we did get our receiver attached, right, as you can see right there. Um, I'm really disappointed how grainy this is. Uh, let me see. We'll see if that, well, that didn't help. Uh, I don't know if that helps either. But anyways, okay, so this is what you got right here. And uh, I'll fix it. Now we're going to go back and we're going to do the VTX real quick, okay? So let's end this here. And uh, again, if you have any questions, hit me up at targetcyclonefpv.com. Please follow us on Facebook and make sure to subscribe to our channel. All these things help us. They don't charge anything. We don't make any money on it from you guys at all. But hopefully we can grow enough to where we get some advertising income right from this. Um, other than that, guys, God bless. Uh, make sure to... Um, Spend time with your family, guys. You never know how long you have with them, so please make the most of it. Fly safe, and we'll see you soon. Peace.